Hey guys, so I finally got to play the first Descendant. So I managed to get in the final beta test. And to my surprise, I actually liked it. Because you guys know I'm a single player story driven guy. So this kind of genre is not really my thing. But I do play multiplayer games. And for the longest time, I have not liked any multiplayer game. And that might change with the first Descendant. Seeing that the gameplay loop got me really hooked. While I know this is just a beta test and they might nerf the progression, or more likely than not, they will in the actual release, I still kind of enjoy the game. So I just hope that Nexon kind of balances everything out up on the full release, not depriving free-to-play players too much, while also managing to be profitable and continue to be able to sustain the game for a very long time. So with that being said, it's time to talk about my thoughts of the final beta test of The First Descendant. So for those unaware, The First Descendant is a looter-shooter free-to-play game akin to games like Destiny except it is in third person, where the core objective is level up your character and get better guns, rinse, and repeat. You progress in the game as you explore the map, completing missions in sections of the map until you reach the final dungeon, which you usually do alongside other players. After that, you proceed to the next map and repeat the game loop. The missions usually range from King of the Hill, eliminate enemies in the area, hack into the systems, destroy objects, or use bombs to destroy objects, and so on. All these involve destroying hordes of enemies that feel really satisfying, whether you're using the machine gun, the assault rifle, the submachine gun, the shotgun, the beam rifle, the sniper rifle, the wide assortment of weapons in the first Ascendant are varied and feel really great. Rest assured that each weapon feels distinct and defeating the different types of enemies never feels old. But guns are not the only weapons in your arsenal. Upon starting the game, you get to choose one of three descendants, Lepic, Viesa, and Ajax. Lepic is the standard soldier with offensive abilities, Viesa casts ice to debuff opponents, and Ajax casts protective spells amongst allies. Since I'm not proficient to these types of games, I opted to choose Lepic because I don't think I would make a great caster of debuffs or protective spells. Whoever you choose will be your first descendant, and the other two will be available in the in-game cash shop. The first descendant is a third-person shooter that requires you to be tactical and resourceful. You need to be strategic on when to approach your opponents, how to approach your opponents, when to fire your weapon, and when to use abilities. While I mostly played the game on solo, there were missions that were clearly designed to be played as a team. And I got through them usually by miraculously taking them all on on my own or other players joining in my mission and saving my ass. And I cannot count how many times this actually happened, but it is a neat feature for solo players, that's for sure. Especially with boss battles and numerous hordes of enemies, you're required to work as a team by covering each other's backs and knowing when to use your abilities so that your team members can take advantage of the situation. Whether you're playing solo or with a team, the First Descendant requires you to be tactical and methodical with your approach to the multiple enemies that you will encounter in the game. As of this beta test, progression is incredibly fulfilling. From increasing your rank to increase storage space, to upgrading guns and getting multitudes of mods and augmentations to your weaponry to increase your damage, your health, your gold collection, and so on. But if you feel intimidated by all these stats, don't worry, as there is an auto-optimization button, which I admittedly used all the time. Because let's face it, early game, you will always get better weapons very quickly. So I don't see the point in min-maxing or incredibly optimizing early game. So whether you just like jumping back straight to the action or incredibly micromanaging your stats, the first descendant has you covered. Navigating around the various maps and towns is also seamless with the fast travel option, making it quick to jump right into the action without excessive mindless travel just to get to your objective. And I do want to give credit to Nexon for the satisfying grappling mechanic where you can reach high or seemingly unreachable areas with the press of the middle button. This mechanic is a major contributor on why I think traveling in the first Descendant is fun. It strikes a perfect balance of giving players some respite time after an intense battle while not lasting too long where the players are just simply running to their objective for about 5 minutes straight. As for the story, admittedly, I only paid half attention because I don't really play these games for the story. And I'm pretty sure it's nothing to write home about. So you are a descendant, a special elite soldier with special abilities, and you apparently are the chosen one to retrieve this artifact called the Iron Heart. And things obviously did not go according to plan, 
and you are halted by the antagonist who is as stereotypical as ever. A big black chungus who is OP takes the iron heart and you spend the rest of the story to go after him and unraveling more about the story. But I will give credit to the audio and the voice acting. It is actually good and better than I expected for a massive multiplayer game. Quite clearly, Nexon allotted a lot of resources into the audio, making the story more palatable and making the gameplay more engaging. Overall, as I said, I really enjoyed my time with The First Descendant. My biggest concern is probably how the final game will end up, given that Nexon needs to monetize the game somehow. I am 98% sure that the progression that I experienced was clearly jacked up and it will surely be nerfed on the full release. But the question is, how much nerfing will they do? And how much money do you have to pay for the progression to be actually satisfying to continue playing for a very long time? We will find out on the full release around August or September, which I will dive right in and make an updated video on how I feel about the game. And that concludes my first impressions for The First Descendant. What are your thoughts of the game? Did you manage to play the beta? Are you excited for the full release? Because I am. Sound off in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and do subscribe for more content and I will see you next time.